What is up, Internet world, and welcome back to Accelerate. I'm Mike Van Hout, he's Ian McAlpine, and today, bring the golf R. Hope you guys are enjoying this Golf R video. Now, one of my favorite pastimes is searching for supercars. And in this economic environment that is on a downturn, it is a great time to look at buying one. And this is where our sponsor, Carly, comes into play. Now, Carly is an OBD2 scanner and much more, which has something called used car check, which basically detects mileage manipulation, which is key when looking at a used car because they roll that stuff back to get more money. So Ian, what else does it do? So obviously the Volkswagen Golf R in our video is brand new, but what about my three-year-old Mazda 3 Turbo? Let's check out what's going on with it. So in the Carly app, you can see live engine data. You can run an in-depth diagnosis of your car's current condition. There's the used car check, as we mentioned, and you can see the health of your battery. I've actually been wondering about my battery health as I left my lights on a few weeks ago and completely drained it. So why don't we run that test and see what the results are in 24 hours. What's also awesome is when there is an issue, Carly can give you detailed info on how to approach fixing your vehicle with Carly's smart mechanic. But looks like all is well with my car. Phew. Now, if you're interested in picking up a Carly scanner, click the link in the description and put in our code ACCELERATE for 15% off. This might not be a big deal to some of you young cats, but for me, it is. This is it. The final time you can buy yourself a manual transmission Golf R. Volkswagen announced for 2025, it's no longer available. So this is it boys. The nostalgia of manual transmission is out the door. Okay, listen. This is the final time you can buy yourself a brand new 2024 Volkswagen Golf. And if you don't like it, then buy it as an investment. And if you want to buy one, make sure you buy one from Dalmar Motors because they were gracious enough to give us one. So there you go. Buy your new Golf R from the good guys at Dalmar Motors right here in our hometown, LDOT, AKA London, Ontario. Now you know the deal with the Mark 8 Golfs. Here in North America, you can only get them in a GTI and a Golf R. And how do you tell the difference? Well, it's very easy when you look at a color. This is blue all the way around. And with a GTI, it is red. Other than, of course, this badge that says R right on it, and there's no GTI badge on this specific car. Now, the GTI has a slightly different bumper. This one is just horizontal slats that go across. You don't have this little trapezoid-looking thing on the left and the right. This one has an opening on this side as well as this side. And then you have Parktronics, but there is no front camera on this Golf R. And it only comes one way here in North America, with the exception of two packages, the carbon package and a sunroof. Now, as I walk past this short overhang front end, you have a light bar that illuminates at night to bring it all together when you're looking at from the front. Now, from the side here, you have 19 inch wheels that have performance tires on them and they are 235, 35, 19 front and back. It is all wheel drive and it does not have a staggered setup. Now, I like this little touch here on these mirror caps. This is satin chrome. And then you have the R badge right there. Very, very clean along the side. Your typical golf handles. You do have a little bit of a side skirt that flares out some so it's not flat or cuts in. You do have a little bump out there when I'm standing here and looking at it. Of course, because this is a German car, your fuel tank is on the right hand side. And the reason for that is if you do have to pull over on the highway, you can fill gas on the same side as, you know, the grass and on the other side where the trucks are flying past you and we'll kill you. Now, what kind of fuel does it take? Well, it takes 91 or premium. Does this vehicle have a sunroof? The answer is no, that is an option. Now, these brakes are 14.1 inch in size. They are cross-drilled and they have a two-piston caliper in, of course, blue. And that's a cool part. When you look at the vehicle from the side, you see these blue brakes with the R logo right on the caliper, as well as these 19 inch wheels that are called Pretoria. Now to my favorite part of this Golf R, the back end. Let's start off with this upper rear spoiler. It is so, so wide. It looks like a double spoiler actually. And it's got these air inlets right underneath it. It reaches almost to the rear bumper, which is crazy. You have the Volkswagen logo here. When you push it, that's how you open up the trunk. Let me show you here. You push it, 
and then pops up. Look at that, cool. Obviously the camera's hiding underneath there. It's not new, that's been a Volkswagen thing for a very, very long time. I like how they have the R placed right in the center and not here. So many manufacturers put this little like insignia of the, basically the model right over here, but it's an R, it should be centered, thumbs up Volkswagen. Move your eyes down here. What you will see is four massive tailpipes. So let's measure them. They are almost five inches wide, just a bit over four and a half inches. That is super cool. And if you're looking at the diffuser, you have one, two, three, four, five little inverted shark fins. And the exhausts, they're real. Whew. Okay, okay, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Okay, so first things first, the seats. So you cannot get plaid style seats in a Golf R. They are only in a GTI. These seats though are Napa leather, they are perforated, they are heated and ventilated, and they have some cool features. Piping in blue, and they have this carbon look along the side of it. In the middle of the backrest, you have the R logo and it's stitched on. So cool, really cool seats. Now along with the aesthetics, this does have three increments of memory seat along with a full power adjustable bottom and back along with lumbar support. Now blue is a theme in here. Even though it has 30 adjustable ambient lighting colors, blue is really the theme on the outside as well as the inside. Even the floor mats have a blue stitching on the outline of it. So it makes sense to have everything blue including your ambient lighting. As you can see on the door panel here, it overlays on this carbon looking trim. Now this carbon trim is all over the car. In Canada here it is an option. It says the carbon package. But you have the small steering wheel. I love it. It has the R on the left hand side. Again, more blue, more stitching. And the R, what it does, it goes through all the different drive modes. So when you hit it, you see it on the screen there. You've got comfort, sport, race, drift, special, and custom. We'll get into that on the drive. But man, this is very, very similar to the GTI. There's no real differences besides some small, tiny tidbits. You have a 10.2 inch screen for the driver, which is me. Of course, you have different drive displays. And then you have a 10 inch screen for everybody else, which is the infotainment. Now, some people are gonna complain that there is no knob for the volume, and I kinda get that. When you listen to music and you wanna turn the volume up quickly, it's just in habit to turn it. From the time we grew up, no matter how old you are, you always just have a knob to you know, make the volume go up or down. But it's actually not that bad when you know how to use it. If you put enough power in your finger and you slide your finger left to right, it actually moves fairly fast. If you just lightly put your hand on it, it just doesn't do a fast enough job. Because really, if you wanna adjust the volume, it's really, I wanna go loud quick or I wanna shut it off quick. And it's just a little bit of effort or knowing how the button that slider works to, to make it work including these HVAC controls, and I learned a new trick here. So if I wanna put my HVAC controls up, this is what it looks like. I can change it from 19, 20, 21, 22, but if I wanna to go to heated seats, you know what I do? I take two fingers and I put it down here and it adjusts right to heated seats. There we go. And then you can adjust how many, you know, hold on, hold on, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. There we go. Okay, here we go. There it is, boom. I can hit it like that and this is how it changes. Wait. Okay, didn't work exactly what I'm saying, but here, hold on. Ah, uh, there it is, okay. So two fingers, now pops up, and now I can put my finger down here to change it. No, okay, that didn't work. Now you do have two USB-Cs, they're hiding underneath there. You do have a wireless charger that simply fits any phone you'd like it to. You have a start and stop button, then you have your shifter. Now your shifter does have more blue on it, including the shift boot right there. And then of course the R logo, pretty sweet. You do have electromechanical parking brake. You do have a lot of piano black here, so this is gonna get fairly dirty with your fingerprints, so make sure you have a little rag to keep this nice and clean, and maybe a little bit up here to keep this nice and clean. And then moving down into your cup holders, you have one big one here and push this button and guess what happens? It tightens up your cup in case your cup is smaller. You do have a cigarette lighter port right there. And the cool part about this is this is slidable. You can slide this for more elbow support when you shift. And this is so, so key because when it's back there, guess what? Your elbow does one of these and that can get annoying. And then what about underneath here? Well, you do have a decent amount of storage right there. There's nothing in terms of charging because you have everything you need right there and right there. 
Now this 10 inch screen is customizable and this is how it's done. You just gotta hold something down for a few seconds and then this is what you can do. You can change that widget to whatever you'd like. Now back to real life, this is what it looks like here. You have three screens and this is your main screen with your pretty straightforward buttons. This is sort of your widget screen and then this final screen here you can adjust with vehicle status settings and then of course your phone once it's connected. If you're wondering how to get in your HVAC controls where you have a climb a button down here, when you hit it, this is what it looks like including air care, smart care, ooh look at that, that is a Golf R convertible. Now a feature that's used a lot are the rear seats being folded down. Because Golfs aren't the biggest vehicles, these things get used a lot. And there's a safety feature. You see this little red thing here? That indicates that the, that the seat is not latched properly. So if you don't push it back hard enough like this, it'll actually still be open. Now, so let's jump inside here and listen to this. I always remember this on Golfs. It sounds like a bank vault closing, especially the back doors. It's like they put more emphasis on the back doors because people test the quality of vehicles in the back door. So one more time, listen to this. <sighs> Love it. Anyways, what do we have back here? Well, we do have these seats. They do have multi-purpose sort of pockets up and down. Well, down's pretty straightforward, but up here you can put your cell phone. So I like to have all those little like pockets and slots for more storage when you're sitting in the back seat here. Really good Napa leathers, nice and soft. Again, more carbon right there and on this side. And I do have a climate control back here, including heated seats for me and this person sitting here. Well, what about skis? Well, yes, golf owners do ski. You pull this down and you do have a pass through right here, boom a ski pass. And you have two more USB-Cs right there. So Ian doesn't let me have the air conditioning on because he's worried about sound. And for me, I'm sweating and boiling. And he doesn't realize that it takes a lot of work to breathe and talk. But thank God I got this front plate holder that comes standard when you buy yourself a Volkswagen of any kind here in Ontario where I live. That is the most annoying thing ever. You know how cars look with a front license plate? Not good. Anyways, let's talk about this trunk. Now, against this competition, this is probably one of the smaller trunks. Some of its competition obviously has larger trunks, but that's what you get when you want a small hatchback to rip around. You get 30 inches worth of depth. As far as width goes, you have 41. As far as height goes, it depends on if you have this parcel shelf or not, but you have a maximum of about 27 and a half worth of clearance to put your plants in when you take this thing to Home Depot. Now underneath here, you don't have a spare. You do have a little subwoofer. You've got a first aid kit and a few other tools there. And then you have a voltage output, a 12 volt hiding right there. That's the only thing you have back here besides the four D rings to have stuff tied down. in the 2024 final edition of a manual transmission Volkswagen Golf R. This is the most powerful Golf R ever brought to North American shores and it is powered by a two liter turbocharged four banger that makes 315 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque when you get the manual. When you opt for the seven speed DSG you get 285 pound feet of torque. Now this is a brand new vehicle from Dalmar Motors, so I cannot beat it. I will just slowly, gently go through the motions. Ooh, this is a cool little gauge. When I'm approaching 50, almost 6,000 RPM, the gauge goes from green to amber to red when you redline it, and that's not happening today. You have comfort, sport, race, drift which makes it primarily rear wheel drive because remember this is all wheel drive this is not front wheel drive like the gti this is an all wheel drive vehicle then you have a special one that literally is called special that has a, a little you know stencil of the nurburgring which is cool and that is the mode that i want to be in so i will hit this thing and i will be in special and it adds opening the valve on the exhaust and it sounds okay okay i like that forever i will always be in nurburgring aka special so i used to have the older when i say i my mom used to have the older generation 
GTI. And it was in blue, it was cool, it was such a fun car to rip around. Now I've had different Golfs before in my life and they've always been amazing. I started off with the VR6, I moved up the chain and then I moved to Honda for a little bit and then I came back and I've kind of always had German cars in my life with Audi and all that fun stuff so I'm very, very familiar with how these things drive. But obviously the world has changed and they've become a little bit softer. Now I am in the stiffest mode possible and yes, it handles very, very well. It is quiet, it is balanced, it is comfortable in here, it is more sophisticated in terms of driving compared to its basically its direct competitor which is the Honda Civic Type R which we've had before on the channel. That is an aggressive track ready vehicle. This is more streetable, this is more elegant, this is more refined. This is everything you expect out of a Golf all these years. This does have variable steering and I do notice that the faster you go, the more stiff the steering feels, the slower you go, the lightened, lightened e it becomes. And you can hear that turbo spin, I like that. Now, because it is a new car, I'm shifting just under 50, 200 RPM or so, because obviously the next buyer of this car wants to feel that newness and I don't wanna hammer it. But I will say the shifting is really clean and crisp. It goes in the right gear at the right time. It doesn't feel like it's giving me any sort of restriction there. The only thing I'd maybe change is the shifter maybe. I don't know, I just would appreciate if it wasn't plastic on the top. I would like some sort of real weight behind it. The cool part about Volkswagens, and people know this, is that they are definitely tunable and there's a ton of aftermarket tuning with this Golf, with this engine specifically. And the cool part about it that is that this four-wheel drive system is gonna be used on the Audi RS3. So you know that the bones of it is very capable. And this engine is definitely capable. So you have a really good package here from factory with factory warranty. And you can basically beat the snot out of it until warranty's done and then you can tune it for your own enjoyment. Some people like to do that before, but for me, I'm like, hey, factory warranty costs a lot of money. And at the same time, you just wanna enjoy the car. And there is value in just going through the motions and you know hammering the car for what it is. And, and that is cool because honestly, we've driven so many cars lately that have like north of 500 horsepower and it just, it's just like on off crazy, like power is crazy. But the enjoyment of rowing the gears just is going away. And those are facts because this is the last Volkswagen Golf R you can buy in manual transmission. Again, they're still keeping it for the GLI but for a GTI, it, aka wagon style, it's done. That's it. Please wait. Now this exhaust does crackle and pop, and I know it will at higher RPMs, but at low RPMs, listen, it still does do it. Watch. There we go. Now this driver's display is completely customizable and one of the displays, which is the R display I have right now, on the left hand side you have performance kilowatt and on the right hand side you have your torque newton meters. Now I'm in fourth gear and I'm doing about 40 miles an hour and I will pin it and you will see I will get to 380 newton meters at 100%. Obviously the horsepower or kilowatts are rising, but on the right hand side the maximum torque I can get to is 380 newton meters of torque. That's a pretty cool display you can use. And if you're wondering, what about braking? Yep, you can go fast, but how about the brakes? Well, you have 14.1 inch rotors on the front and 12.1 on the back. And how does it brake? Well, does it get enough job? I do have a Corvette behind me, so I will not play those games. But I feel like the brakes are good. When I've been using it now for the last like 15 minutes, it felt pretty solid. Obviously, this is a brand new car. I can't totally hammer it and check the brakes very significantly, but it's German, man. It feels pretty solid. Anything is better than my Tesla, to be honest, for the most part. I will say that it, with the R badge, would I expect something a lot more aggressive out of the box? 
Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And obviously they know what buyer they're after. Because if you think you want a Golf R, you so it would sound ultra aggressive, super low to the ground. But the problem is that society doesn't really want that anymore. They still want a softened vehicle with all the tidbits. And that's really what this has become now. It's not a super ultra aggressive, raw, loud machine. No, it's sophisticated, it's quiet, it gives you all the little fluff in the vehicle. And maybe next year's model will have more of that and that's yet to be seen. But in this model, the fact that you can get manual transmission, it just is one of those things that it's basically a dying breed, it's just unfortunate. So, if you like golfs and you like a hatchback and you got a little bit of change in your pocket and you feel like, look, this might be worth something in the future if you keep it in really good shape. And generally, golf owners keep their cars in immaculate shape. So if that's you and you're looking for something like this, then maybe you'd want to consider buying this 2024 Volkswagen Golf R. So that's that on this 2024 of Volkswagen Golf R manual transmission. Let us know in the comments below if you think that this will hold value over the next five years because it is manual and well, they're not making any more of these bad boys ever. What if they bring it back like five years from now? Would it be worth less money or more money? That's interesting. Anyways, that's that. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.